It should not take decades to permit a mine, Mr. Chairman. So thanks for your support on that. Thank you, Senator. Senator Cortez Masto. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, the panelists. Uh, Ms. Trujillo, let me start with you. Uh, I so appreciate uh, Senator Hickenlooper's comments. As we all are aware, there's a historic drought happening uh, in the West right now. Colorado River Basin uh, is facing its worst hydrology on record, which could lead to its first ever shortage declaration this year. I so appreciate your comments. It's all hands on deck right now. Please let us know what the administration needs from us as well to address this issue. And I just want to put something on your radar. Right now, um, I'm working on a bill to establish a new competitive grant program under the Bureau of Reclamation for large-scale water recycling and reuse projects. A bill would also include measures that would provide greater clarity and expand eligibility under existing drought programs for eligible entities to receive federal financial assistance for drought planning and drought mitigation purposes. Look forward to working with you on that, so thank you. Let me jump back to conversation around um, critical minerals and battle, um, battery uh, recycling um, and manufacturing get grants. Um, given all the exciting new technologies I see regularly in Nevada, I've been pushing what I call in my state uh, the Innova Innovation State uh, Initiative. This has allowed me in Nevada to promote the companies and technologies that in some cases have helped uh, my state weather the current economic and health challenges uh, posed by COVID-19. But one of those new exciting areas is battery recycling of all sizes. And that's why I'm proud to be supporting Senator King's Battery and Critical Mineral Recycling Act. And I agree uh, with Mr. O'Mara's written testimony uh, that the entirety of that bill should be seriously considered for this package as well. I'm also working to put together a bipartisan effort on battery manufacturing grants, especially recycling, so we can be investing in a domestic supply chain and workforce that help us complete, compete globally today uh, and tomorrow. I've seen firsthand in Nevada where recycling is not only a future economic driver, but a necessity as we have more and more of the vehicle batteries on our roads and coming off of them. And I'm aware of industries in Alaska, Montana, Idaho, all over who could benefit from DOE grant funds to establish or retrofit facilities for this purpose. So let me start with uh, Dr. Hogan and Mr. O'Mara. What are the broader implications of making investments in our domestic manufacturing capacity? And would you agree that we need to be making strides in this space for global competitiveness and national security reasons? And Dr. Hogan, I'll start with you. Uh, yes, we, uh, we agree that the supply chain that go with our batteries is a critical place for us to be uh, taking important steps so that that build out uh, is happening in this country. As, uh, as you've pointed out, it's a growth opportunity uh, for states like Nevada, but, uh, but really the whole country uh, as we move toward uh, a variety of battery uh, technologies for electric vehicles and for the grid. Um, so we absolutely agree that this is uh, an important priority. And, and thank you. And let me, and, and uh, Mr. O'Meara, I want your uh, weigh in on this, but let's talk also, also about the critical minerals for these batteries as we talk about recycling, right? Lithium, lithium mining we are looking at in Nevada right now, but cobalt. And to my understanding, where is most of the cobalt being mined right now? Do either one of you know? Does anybody know, Mr. O'Meara? Congo. Yeah. And that's the challenge uh, that we have in this country. And so if we are really going to identify these critical minerals, bring that supply chain back from the extraction, through the production, through the whole process, uh, we have to look at the mining piece of it as well. And so, Mr. O'Meara, if you could address this, I yeah. would appreciate it. And I think Senator Langford said it well earlier. I mean, like we've seen the problems when we don't have control over our supply chains. And you know, I'll be damned if we're going to spend the next 30 years buying everything from China or offshore wind turbines from Germany or electric vehicles from Japan um, when we could do that all here. And like, there's a there is an environmental piece of this. I mean, there's been a nimbyism around a lot of this. We have to be smarter. There's also been GAO analyses that show that kind of incomplete permits are slowing down the process. And in some cases, as much as kind of government inefficiency. But I think combining the work that you're trying to do with the work that Senator Manchin's been trying to do around advanced manufacturing and thinking about everything in between, it's the best way to create good paying jobs in every part of the country if we do it right. That's right. And I know I've, I've got just a few minutes less. Uh, let me just touch on the rangeland fires because I also appreciate this conversation as well. Nevada, most of our fires are rangeland fires. We have cheat grass everywhere. And, and we have been talking about trying to address this. This is an invasive species. 
uh, for all of the reasons of what, that I heard earlier, it's just not conducive or effective here in, in Nevada. So the goal here is how do we make sure that our federal agencies have the resources they need and the information they need to really address this invasive species and address what we see are the rangeland fires. Uh, listen, we have forest fires, yes, but rangeland fires that I've seen in Nevada are some of the largest that we have ever seen, and they have an impact on individuals uh, and the economy uh, along with the climate as well. So, Mr. Amir, if you would touch on that very briefly, I would appreciate it. Yeah, and, and just building on, on Dr. Holtz, Ekin's point, I mean, this is an area where, like, if we don't make investments, the, down, the downside on the economy slowing down our GDP is massive. I mean, and so, like, again, I mean, I think this is like collective defense. I mean, if we have to invest in our natural infrastructure as a way to reduce the risk to community, to life, to property, to, to businesses, um, and we need to do it at scale. I mean, the challenge is that it's always an afterthought. It's always treated as discretionary spending, but I would argue this is as important to our economic future as anything else we're talking about right now. I agree. Thank you. Thank you to the panelists. Round. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh,